Hey guys, my name is Austin Gregory, and in this quick lesson, I am going to teach you how to create a first person controller using Bolt. So for this, the first thing I want is a player object. So I'm gonna create an empty object here and I'm gonna call it player. And we're gonna be moving our player around using a rigid body. So we're gonna be uh, using rigid body velocity and forces to jump and move around and things like that. And we also wanna be able to collide with our game world. So I wanna add a capsule collider. And I wanna make sure that we're at least two units tall. That makes sense. I also wanna make sure that the camera is gonna follow the player around because we're gonna be in first person perspective, right? I wanna see the world from the player's eyes. So put the main camera on the player just like that as a child. Now when the player moves, so does the camera. Pretty simple. I want the camera to face the direction the player object is facing though. So I'm gonna hit the zero on the Y rotation. So now whatever direction the player is looking in, that's what direction the camera's in. Also, the camera is not at zero, zero, zero in our player, so we have a weird offset going on. So I'm gonna zero that up really nicely there. Maybe put it at one on the Y, so we're at the eye level of the player. If we look here, we can see the camera's at the top where the head would be. Looks pretty good. I just wanna drop this guy down all the way to the ground. So the way we're gonna do this is we're going to rotate the player whenever we move the mouse left and right. So we'll just grab and we'll rotate left and right. We're gonna be using Euler angles for this. So we're gonna be calculating it based on the mouse movement for the player, and then the camera, again, is gonna be rotating on the X. We're doing it separately so that we can actually walk in the direction the player is facing, and it's not just the direction the camera is facing. So to get started doing this, I am going to go to my player, and I'm gonna add a flow machine, create a new macro for this, put it in my macros folder, and call it first person. And for this, what I wanna do first of all, is I want to lock my cursor to my screen so that when I put when I click play, my cursor is not moving around and clicking on things when I'm trying to just play my game. Because in first person mode, you typically don't have your cursor visible, right? So let's just set the lock state of our cursor. And I want to set it to be locked. Now this happens right whenever the player is loaded. I want to hit shift space to make this graph screen full screen here. And what I wanna do is we wanna first get some calculations done for the mouse movement so we can use that to look around. And I wanna keep this in a couple of variables, mouse Y, and this is gonna be a float. So it's gonna be how much we're moving each frame to the left or to the right, or in this case, mouse Y up and down, so on, on the Y axis. And then mouse X can be the same thing except on the horizontal axis and not on the vertical, vertical axis. Now we want to calculate this based on our mouse movement. So what I wanna do is go get axis. This will allow us to get the movement of our mouse based on what axis we're looking at. So mouse X would be mouse left to right, so going from negative one to positive one, and then the same for the vertical on the Y, negative one on the bottom to positive one on the top. So I wanna get mouse X for this one. This is going to be the axis called mouse X. So what we'll do every single frame is increase or decrease the values of our rotation, right? The X, Y, and Z values, the Euler angles for our rotation. We're going to be setting those every single frame based on the little bit of movement our mouse did that frame. So I wanna take this and I wanna calculate mouse X and I want to add it to the current value of mouse X. So to do that, I'll just take mouse X, drag it out here, and that gets the value of mouse X. And I wanna add these together. So I'll get the sum unit and I'll take this as A and this is B. And there we go. So take mouse X, hold down Alt, that'll give me the set value for this. Then just take the resulting value of that sum, and then we'll take the flow from update and pass it directly into there. Now we have our mouse X set up, and we're gonna do the same thing for our mouse Y. Get axes, mouse Y, get mouse Y. Now instead of adding, we're going to subtract, because if we were to add, we would have the inverted look where if I push up, my camera is going to go down, right? But I wanna push up and actually look up. So I wanna take this and I wanna create a subtract unit, A, B, and take the resulting value and set mouse Y. Grab the flow, connect it up, there we go. We wanna take the resulting values that we set to these variables and rotate the player around as well as the camera based on what they are doing. So for the player rotation, I will do a set local Euler angles. And that's going to allow me to set the X, Y, and Z rotation directly, but I wanna create a vector three for this. So I'll say create vector three X, Y, and Z values here. And now all I'll do is take the mouse X movement, which is going to be left and right. So we wanna look left and right, which means we have to rotate on the Y though, because we're gonna rotate around the Y. I wanna take this and set it as the Y that we're rotating, right? Just directly like that. And I'll grab this flow and pass it over. Let's try this out and see what happens. Mouse left, 
mouse right. Looks good. Notice the mouse is also hidden. We cannot see it, so it's not going out of the window and messing things up when I click. But hit escape and it comes back and then I can end the simulation. So for that, we're rotating the player. Notice the target is self and this is on the player. And for the next one, we want to rotate the camera looking up and down. So we have to get a reference to that. So I'll do get main. This will give me camera get main, which will give me the camera that is tagged as the main camera. And I want to do the same thing. Set local Euler. Create vector three. But this time I want to set the rotation for the camera. So I'll pass in the camera reference just like that. And then for this one, I want to set the rotation on the X axis because we're looking up and down and not around. And the value I want is the mouse Y. Just like that. And we can grab this flow, connect it up. So for the movement, we're going to be using the velocity of the rigid body. And we're going to set that by creating a vector three that's going to represent the direction the velocity should be in multiplied by the speed it should go in that direction. So to do this, let's create a vector three where the Y value of the velocity is based on the gravity. So to do that, we'll go ahead and get the current velocity. And I just want to grab the Y value from the current velocity. So get Y. Just like that. So whatever the velocity is of the rigid body currently, this is what it will remain because we are not changing the Y value. We're simply setting it to be whatever it already was whenever we create this new movement vector. Now for the X and Y, it's going to be based on our input. So I want to create another input get axis unit here. And I want to get the horizontal axis. And then I want to copy that and paste it. And I want to get the vertical axis. Now these will give us our input such as WSD or the arrow keys or a joystick or a controller, whatever you're using. This will give us the input from negative one to positive one on either axis. So we're going to use this, multiply it by a speed value. So let's just bring this out here and I'll do a multiply and we can multiply it by however fast we want to move. And we can change this by just creating a float literal here. And what I'll do is I'll set it to be something like five. And you can also create a speed variable for this and then just change the variable. But in this case, I'll just create a, a simple float literal here and use it for both of them. So I'm multiplying that one. And then I want to create another one here, another multiply because I have to multiply both of them. And I want to multiply both of them by five. That just makes sense to go the same speed in both directions. And I want to take the horizontal and add that as the X and the vertical and add that as the Z movement. And there we go. Now I want to use this vector three that we just created as the velocity vector. So I'm going to go add unit, set velocity on the rigid body, and I want to simply pass in this vector three. But before we do that, the current vector three for the direction that we have is a world space based direction. And I want it to be in fact local to the object, whatever direction the, the object is facing, that is the forward. So whenever I press up, I walk in the direction the object's facing and not whatever the world thinks forward is. So to do this, I'm going to use something called transform direction. This will take a direction and turn it into a local direction from a world direction. So I'm just going to pass it in directly like that and then pass the result over. And instead of update, I want to use a fixed update since we're working with physics here. I want to make sure that we do not update it outside of a normal physics frame. Now let's try this out. And now I can walk around in my world. Really cool. So now let's set up jumping. So now in order to jump, I want to simply add a Y force to our rigid body. So I'm going to go add unit, go to add force. This will give me a couple options. I want to do force with force mode. And the force mode I want to use is impulse. So we want a quick impulse of force, not something over time. We want it to be an immediate jump. And the force I want to add will be a force on the Y. Something like five would be fine. And whenever I actually hit a button, I want to add the force. So I want to do on button input. And the button I'm looking for is the jump button. Whenever it is pressed down, fire off this event. And I jump. Now I'm not jumping high enough to make it on this platform. So let's change that. Now I am. Walk up these steps, I can fall right off, but I can hit space all I want and I can just fly forever, Kirby style. And we don't want that to happen. So I wanna make sure I'm on the ground whenever I try to jump. So to do that, let's create a variable here called grounded. It'll be true if we are on the ground and false if we're not. So if it's true, we can jump. If it's false, we cannot. 
pretty simple. And I want to go ahead and add a check in here to make sure. So I add a branch. I'll pass the flow into the branch. And I will say if grounded, so I'll just grab get grounded here, pass that in as the Boolean. If grounded, add force when I hit the button. If not, we don't want to add any force because we should not be able to jump. And now it's actually set this to be true if I'm on the ground and false if I'm not. To do this, we'll use a sphere cast, which is like a ray cast, except it's a bit thicker. And I want to make sure that I have the origin, hit info, max distance, and layer mask. Now the origin is going to be the player's origin, so get position of the player just like this. That's going to be the 0, 0, 0 of the player. The radius will be something like 0.3 units uh, wide there. The direction is going to be negative 1 on the Y because we want to go down below the player to check for the ground below the player. And the max distance it will go. So we're two units tall. If we start in the center of the player and we go down one unit, that'll be the very bottom. But I have to check a bit further than that. So I want to go 1.1. And the layer mask I'm looking for, we'll just drag this out. I'll do a layer mask literal. And this will allow me to define which mask I want. I want to check for everything. If I'm on top of anything, I can jump. Pretty simple. So now take the resulting value of this and set our grounded to be whether we've hit something or not. And that'll be the resulting value of the Boolean here will be if we hit something based on these conditions, it'll be true. If not, it's false. Pass the flow in here. And again, I want to do fixed update. Hit space, keep hitting space. I only jump when I hit the ground again. Pretty cool. Hold down control and drag. We'll organize some of our units here into groups. And that is it to get a basic first person controller set up using Bolt. Very cool. So that's it for this video, guys. Hope you learned a lot. My name is Austin Gregory, and I will see you in the next one.